Hello, my name is Nicolette Ramirez and I am from the year 2016. I was reading some sonnets about some dude named Edmund Spencer and that got me thinking, what was the process like from courting to marriage back in the 16th century? So I decided to see for myself. So I grabbed my camera person, Yessi, and decided to head out and see. So we have traveled back in time to 16th century England, and for this video we will be looking at the transitions of courtly behavior from old traditions. We will be looking at the different age requirements, as well as the status of the marriage provided, the formalities, and the actual marriage ceremony itself. We will be following one lovely couple from various stations in their transition from courtship to their actual marriage. But first, let me give you some background so that you viewers at home will be up to speed about the different weird customs of this century. So after looking at many sources, we here have learned that courting was not an easy feat. There were many steps that one had to take before they could actually get married. The first step was that they actually had to meet and then they had to have Cupid's arrow strike them. Look, Cupid's arrow in the distance. Amor is in the air. Doth my eyes deceive me? Or is that a vision of loveliness equal to that of an angel? My eyes have not seen such beauty until today. I am Sir Shane. It is an honor to make your acquaintance. My, such forward speech, but one as charming as you I have not yet met. My name is Anna, the pleasure is all mine. Watch as the young couple engages in the strange customs of courtship rituals. Fascinating. The couple appears to be around the ages of 24 to 27, which according to research by Jeffrey Singman in Daily Life in Elizabeth in England, was around the age that was required for couples to be married. Though we are led to believe that couples married extremely young, the average age for women to be married was 24 and for men 27, unless they were of the upper class which tended to marry very young, with men at the age of 24 and women at 19. This also varied by location. In London, they tended to marry young. For those under the age of 21, parental remission was required for, in order to be married. So as you can see, our lovely couple appears to be of the same social status, which means that they are allowed to engage in courting. According to Eric Carlson's text, Courtship in Tudor England, oftentimes before the mid-16th century, couples were mostly paired up for economic gain, and love didn't have anything to do with it. The marriage was arranged by the parents who had to say what was going on. <clears throat> before this new type of courtship arose with where love was the main center focus, many marriages actually failed and ended in adulterous acts. We've been here a couple of weeks now and have been following around our lovely couple to learn of their habits. Some might say stalking, but I consider it research. Our couple has evolved from mere flirtation into the exchanging of gifts. According to Jennifer McNabb's text, Ceremonies versus Consent, Courtship, Illegitimacy, and Reputation in Northwest England, there were certain formalities that had to be followed, such as the exchanging of gifts and the expression of spousal consent. Oh look, there they are now. My dearest love, Come out so that I might gaze upon thy beauty. To be apart from you is such a curse. I can't wait any longer to see thy perfection. I too cannot bear to be apart from you, my love. Here is a small token of my love. Cherish it as if it were me there with you. I will cherish it with my life. For my love for you has no bounds. Hey, camera's still rolling. Oh, oh, oh right. <laughs> well, as you can see, our couple seems to be totally infatuated with one another, and I think they're ready to begin the next step. With the next steps come a couple procedures that they need to follow. It's been a few weeks of them exchanging gifts, and the male looks ready to take the female on as his bride. In David Searcy's text, Birthright, Marriage, and Death, Ritual, Religion, and Life Cycle in Tudor England, it states how important it was for someone to become married. Marriage was the end goal of someone at this time, and if someone broke off the engagement, they could be persecuted by the church court. 
I have brought you back to the spot where I first met and I lived with Bird. I cannot imagine spending the rest of my life without you. And I have brought you to here to ask you. Of course I will. Tis my greatest wish to be your wife and be together forever. I love you with all my heart. <laughs> that was beautiful. Truly. Well, now that our couple is officially engaged, there are a few other formalities that they must make before the wedding. Prior to the ceremony, the couple will announce their wedding with a form called bands. They will place this band on the church doors in order to announce their union to everyone. Should anyone have any objections to this union, they can do so to their to the church. In addition, this band was also to make sure that our couple was not related and that they were not previously engaged, because that would be really embarrassing. Once the couple does get married, the male gets a new status into society. Carlson states that until a man is married in 16th century England, he cannot become officially part of adult society, while well, Sigmund adds that marriage equals independence and financial stability. So we'll check in with our lovely couple at the start of their actual ceremony. The day has finally arrived, and there have been no objections, so the ceremony can proceed as planned. Before the ceremony, there are a couple of things that must be done. According to David Searcy's Birth, Marriage, and Death, Rituals, Religion, and the Life Cycle in Tudor and Store, England, it states that the ceremony had to take place in front of witnesses in a church setting in order to be valid. Also, he says that marriages could not take place during the seasons of Lent, Easter, late spring, which is reserved for prayer, and during the Advent before Christmas. These times were to be devoted to spiritual development. Now, customarily, for lower class citizens, the marriage itself actually took place outside on the church porch. But according to Circe, an early Tudor etiquette book states that a couple belonging to the upper class could marry within the church itself. Our couple is just about to get married, so let's take a look. Cuando yo era niña, hablaba como niño. Pensaba como niño, jugaba como niño. And now for the reading of the band. On March 20th, Shane and Anna have consented to engagement in the holy matrimony. On the third Sunday from their consented engagement, Sunday, April 10th, Shane and Anna are to be married. If there be any objections to the marriage of Shane and Anna, please let it be known to the, your local church. Do you both wish to continue with the marriage? Yes. Yes. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully join together, let him speak now or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Splendid. Now. Do you two, forsaking all other, take one another as long as you both shall live? Who giveth this woman to be married unto this man? I do. Okay, cool. Now for the vows and the ring. Sir Shane, do you have the ring? Yes. Yes, good. Now repeat after me and place the ring on her fourth finger of her left hand. I, Shane, take the Anna. I, Shane, take the Anna. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poorer. Poorer. In sickness. In sickness. And in health. And in health. To love. To love. And to cherish. To cherish. Till death us part. Till, part. Till death do us part. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. Be wed. 
With my body, I thee worship. With my body, I thee worship. And with all my worldly goods, I endow. With all my worldly goods, I endow. Now place three. Now, Anna, repeat after me. I, Anna, take thee shame. I, Anna, take thee shame. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poorer. For poorer. For sickness and in health. For sickness and in health. To love. To love. To cherish. To cherish. And to obey. And to obey. Till death us part. Till death us part. All right. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man asunder. For as much as Shane and Anna have consented together in holy wedlock, and have witnessed the same before God and this company, and have therefore given and pledged their troth to either to other, and have declared the same by the giving and receiving of a ring and joining of hands, I pronounce that they be man and wife together. Ah, uh, I just love weddings. Well, there you have it, folks. The ceremony is officially over, and now we can begin the wedding festivities and celebrate in nuptial cheer. And then they can consummate the marriage in order to make it official for them to be husband and wife. And why aren't you filming me? They don't look too happy. Well, I believe this is what we call witchcraft. And that concludes this video. It's time to skedaddle. Bye-bye.